Searching high, searching low, searching all around the world, but you'll never find that peace of mind till you look inside. Questioning the life I've lived But I know being present in your love Keeps both feet on the ground Cause here within my breath Everyone I breathe I find comfort no joined us this beautiful Sunday morning. We are excited to lead you in worship. I'm one of your worship leaders, Laura. I'm Vaughn. I'm Lizzie. And I'm Alex. And we'll be leading you in song today. Let us all sing together wherever you are. Ooh, ooh. I can see the clouds rolling. I can feel the winds, they try to shake me, I will not be. 
be moved My feet are on the rock Ooh, I can feel the waters rise I can hear the howling lies They haunt me Fears won't hold me now My feet are on the rock When I feel my hope Good morning. My name is Will Atwood and I'm the pastoral intern. I want to thank you so much for being with us today as we come together in community on this new year. It's 2021 and no, the world may not have completely changed, but we continue to grow and love on each other here at Mosaic. So we say these words to you, whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, whatever your story or identity, God's grace is here for you, and so are we. So we welcome you to the Mosaic Worship Community at First United Methodist Church of Denton. I am so excited to let you know that I will be leading a new Sunday school class starting January 10th called God Said What? Many passages in the Bible make us question if that is really what God said or meant. Could this be the God that I know and love? Join me Sundays at 8.30 a.m. via Zoom to learn some seminary tips on how to read the Bible with scriptural integrity. We are also beginning a new study on Emmanuel Acho's book, Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man, on Tuesday evenings at 7 via Zoom starting on January 12th. We would love for you to be part of this anti-racism work and growth towards a better future for all. You can learn more at fumcdenton.com slash anti-racism. I also want to remind you to go ahead and get your communion supplies ready because today is Communion Sunday and we want to share this meal with you, being together in spirit. Lastly, we invite you now to go to fumcdenton.com slash sign in so we know you are here with us. Let's continue in worship as we sing this next song.
searching high, searching low, searching all around the world, but you'll never find that peace of mind till you look inside your soul. running constantly through my head the endless roller coaster question in the life I live but I know being present in your love keeps both feet on the ground cause here within my breath to bring you a word today about, well, a word. (laughs) There's this word that a lot of us dread, some probably a little more than others. The word, responsibility. Yuck, right? That sounds hard. Sounds like being a real full grown person, yeesh. But something we are taught in seminary is that responsibility is not about something you have to do to be successful or looked well on by people in your community. It's not a heavy obligation or burden. It's actually just the ability to respond. 
allowing for continual growth in responsiveness and transformation. Responsibility. We have a responsibility as just being humans on this planet to try and be the best version of ourselves and to be responsible in our relationships to one another. We have been given the ability to choose for ourselves who we want to be. This is the gift from the Creator. We have the ability to say, Spirit, I am open to becoming not whatever the world wants me to be, but I'm open to becoming who I was born to be, a reflection of your divine essence, just one little unique sparkle of it on this spinning little rock for this little tiny time we have on earth. We have the ability to respond, to regularly participate in this life-altering grace that Christ offers us to be our whole and complete selves. Now we just have to say yes. Will you pray with me? <sighs> Powerful God, today we look towards a new year. And just like every year, we think deeply about who we want to be. God, help us not be self-centered and only think about our selfish desires of what kind of person we want the world to see. Let us not focus on what we can achieve, but instead, let us respond to the gift of true life you have given us to cooperate with you in the world the Spirit nourishes to refresh our souls, soften our hearts, work for the good and care for those around us. Work within us, God, so we can work without. Let us make the decision to shift our awareness to the real gifts you grow in us, courage to love ourselves fully and deeply. Hope to see the good all around us and strength to keep going when the dark night seems never ending. Love for those who keep us grounded in our very being. For these things we pray. Amen. thousand times I fail, still your mercy remains. Should I stumble again, still I'm caught in your grace, everlasting. Your light will shine when all else fades, ever ending. Your glory goes beyond.
is a season of giving and we ask that you remember the church as you give at a time when it seems as though so much of the world has stopped the needs of our community have not for so many they are amplified so first denton has made it a priority to continue supporting our mission partners and assisting church members and community members who are struggling financially this work is only made possible by the generous donations of our congregation. So if it, if it is on your heart to give during this Christmas season, you can find out how to do so at fumcdenton.com slash give. There's nothing like an ice cold glass of lemonade on a hot summer day. Though I know some of you would prefer something a bit harder, just saying. In my neighborhood, I still occasionally see children on hot summer days flanking a card table while holding signs promising delicious lemonade behind the glass, though inflation has slammed the going rate. A dollar! Kids, I used to sell the stuff for 10 cents a glass. What do you mean, what century? Of course, we are in the midst of winter, and I might add a pandemic whose reality has lasted 10 long months. Ice cold lemonade may not sound very appealing to you, but that's not to say that we all couldn't benefit from a little refreshment nowadays. As the idiom goes, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade, unless there's lobster tail, a bit of lemon and a pat of butter, but I digress. Is it just me, or do you also feel parched, dry, your soul running on empty? To me, it feels like I've trudged hundreds of miles through sub-Saharan desert, through arid and barren landscape with little to no life, no food, water, or bare grills when you need them, and little hope that things will get better anytime soon. My desert wanderings have taken their toll on my spirit. How has this last year left you feeling? What toll has it taken on you, your life, your soul, your interior life? Even the anticipated arrival of a vaccine doesn't diminish the struggle, loss, and challenge of 2020. I was reading about the toll COVID-19 has had on healthcare workers who've been on the front lines battling this pandemic since late March. The fatigue that they've been experiencing has been intense. Insomnia, anxiety, and depression are just some of the symptoms medical workers are reporting. The exhaustion is palpable. I can't imagine how gut-wrenching it must be to watch patient after patient succumb to this disease, diminishing hope and weighing down on the soul. It's why a representative group in our church showed up last month during a shift change at Presbyterian Hospital Denton to celebrate and applaud our healthcare workers and to provide holy donuts. And it's not just healthcare workers who feel empty, parched, and worn out. Many have struggled to find joy while trying to get their Christmas on. People have tragically lost loved ones, jobs, healthcare, and in some cases, they found themselves homeless and destitute. Businesses have gone under, savings and retirement accounts raided. So imagine if on your wilderness wanderings, you finally stumble onto an incredible oasis, brimming with life, filled with shade trees, pools of 
clear, clean water, luscious fruits and foliage, a, a gentle breeze kissing your face as you fall to your knees to drink deeply of its cool water, renewing your parched throat while washing your face of the dust of the long journey. And in the midst of the oasis, a grand Bedouin tent glowing with lamplight as the night falls. And in the air is the smell of delicious cooked food and a gracious host who invites you to come in and feast and rest from your journey to lounge on soft linens and bedding. What if all this awaits you? Today, we start a new sermon series titled Refresh. For the next four weeks, we'll explore how our faith tradition invites us into a ministry of refreshment. Refreshment begins within and then overflows into our relationships, our church, and the world. While ultimately it's God who renews and refreshes our souls and our lives, God asks for our cooperation in the renewing work of the Spirit. Refreshing our inner selves makes us available for the work that God has for us, a ministry that runs in the background even as we work, play, build relationships, and make plans for the future. Refreshment is not a denial of reality, but an intentional decision to accept God's gifts of peace, faith, love, and hope. To borrow from the idiom, when life gives you lemons, squeeze. Today, refresh yourself. Our scripture reading is from John chapter 4, verses 13 through 14. It's the story of the Samaritan woman at the well. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The word of the Lord. As we begin 2021, we all have the opportunity to enter into a time of refreshment. What the Apostle Paul describes in Philemon 1.7, as anapao, to rest or to refresh. Paul claims we've all been given a ministry of refreshment to refresh ourselves, our relationships, our church, and our world. So let's begin at home with self-care. The water I give, says Jesus, will become in them a spring. So what's so special about today? It's Epiphany Sunday. The day Christians remember the coming of the Magi to visit the baby Jesus, bearing gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. I could imagine these priests traveling by caravan, bringing with them all that they would need to, to sustain themselves over the course of their year-long journey. Making their way across the desert, they go from oasis to oasis until they finally arrive at Bethlehem, where they will worship a newborn king. The Magi knew about refreshment. Their gifts would be helpful for the Holy Family as they flee to Egypt, helping fund food, shelter, and transportation. This is way before Uber. It's as if God was saying, I care about your well-being. But before they can bring their timely gifts, they must first self-care. Self-care is biblical. Jesus commands us to love our neighbor, but qualifies that love, agapao, hos, say ought to, literally love as your own self. If you think about it, many of Jesus' teachings and miracles arise while he's doing self-care. While asleep on a boat, he is awoken to still the storm. The feeding of the 5,000 began with Jesus sharing his own lunch. Jesus goes up a mountain to pray and while praying sees his disciples' boat caught in a storm and walks out to meet them. And in today's reading, Jesus' thirst for a drink of water becomes an opportunity to teach about his messianic identity to the woman at the well. The implication being self-care is how you prepare, i.e. power up, for the work of love. If you Google self-care, you'll see a plethora of suggestions for self-care. Not all of them scriptural, like doing something nice for yourself. And nothing wrong with that but I'm not sure what kind of lasting impact indulging yourself has. 
I still remember a church member from a former church, Joyce McCoy, telling her husband to do something nice for himself while she was away on business. When she returned, sitting in the driveway was a brand new Corvette. Not the kind of treat she had in mind, obviously. Most of us are already pretty good at doing nice things for ourselves. Unfortunately, retail therapy doesn't translate well into spiritual self-care. Spiritual self-care is the way we feed and care for the soul, your interior life. It's our failure to care for our interior world that causes us to buy toys to keep us from getting bored with ourselves. And that's tragic because when you develop your interior life, you can discover contentment and joy without exhausting the Netflix catalog or your savings. Scripture describes several approaches to spiritual self-care. For example, love God. Few things have the potential to care for your soul than upping your game when it comes to your relationship with God. When your relationship with God is off-center, it will impact every area of your life. It throws everything out of sync. God offers us forgiveness. There are few things that can right the ship like forgiveness. That's especially true in our relationship with God. God's intent is not for us to live under a burden of guilt, but rather in a state of forgiveness and acceptance. It says Jesus, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. You see, God cares passionately about the state of your interior life. Like a Bedouin tent surrounded by a vast desert, your interior life is intended to be a place of rest in God's oasis of love. God loves you just the way you are and promises not to leave you that way. In other words, God brings out the best in us if we'll cooperate. Nurturing your awareness of God's presence and purpose in your life can ground you in joy, but you have to put it into practice. So let's talk about practice, or as I like to call it, the art of the squeeze. Let's begin with a practice of prayer and meditation. Prayer is probably the most intimate thing we do in our relationship with God. Prayer, as I've said before, is how the soul breathes. Thus, prayer is less about asking God for what we want as it is about spending quality time with God, both speaking and listening. And sometimes, as 30 years of marriage to my wife Susan has taught me, it's just about being in each other's presence. No need to say anything. Says James 5.13, if anyone among you is in trouble, let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. For me, prayer is how I unload the undue burdens I carry and know that I am heard, supported, and cared for. Instead of judgment for our shortcomings and fails, I feel God's love, understanding, and where needed forgiveness. Secondly, the practice of gratefulness. The desert fathers and mothers taught simplicity of life. In this vein, we are taught to take water with us for the journey ahead. Believing that's true, not just for your body, but for your interior life, your inner life, early Christians asked this question, what satisfies me and yet leaves me open for more? Their answer, the way of gratitude. Says Jesus, the water that I give you will become in you a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. Gratitude is an attitude of thankfulness. When it comes to perspective, gratitude is a game changer. It allows you to see that your life is a gift, something to be unwrapped, not a burden to be endured. So much of us have been enduring life, and it's time to start living it instead. Some respond to the desert by hoarding. Unfortunately, an attitude of scarcity always leads to drought. Generosity is gratefulness with skin on it. If prayer is how the soul breathes, then practicing gratitude is how we exercise our interior life. It's, it's, it's like a peloton for the soul. Exercising gratitude, especially when I'm tempted to withdraw or hoard, helps me stay grounded and focused on my purpose in God's big picture scheme of things, the reign of God on earth. Now, there are a number of other practices that can help us self-care. Uh, we just don't have time to cover right now. Things like spending time in nature, seeking spiritual support, talking with a loved friend or family member. Uh, humor is also good for the soul. I mean, look for the humor in the simple things around you like mi croave, 
I guess that depends on which side of the toast you butter twice. But I want to finish with one final practice of self-care. God's refreshing gift of communion. John Wesley, founder of Methodism, taught his Methodist societies three general rules. First, to do no harm of any kind. Secondly, to do good of every possible sort. And thirdly, to attend upon the ordinances of God, interpreted by some as stay in love with God. As Wesley describes it, the ordinances refer to regular worship of God, the practice of communion, prayer, fasting, and the study of scripture. Communion is one of the main ways we drink deeply of God's grace. So Wesley challenged his Methodist societies to take communion as often as possible. Recently, I watched a video about breakfast around the world, and what really caught my attention was how different families and different cultures all described the shared meal and how it brings people closer together. Communion not only brings us closer to Jesus, the host of this holy feast, but closer to one another. At this table, we're invited into a ministry of refreshment where we are fed and nourished by God's grace and then sent out as messengers of that grace. At this table, we become God's oasis in a dry and barren desert. The world around us is hungry and it's thirsty, both literally and spiritually. Says Paul, we've been given a ministry of refreshment to refresh ourselves, our relationship, our church, and our world. So take the oasis with you, like water for the journey ahead. Practice the art of the squeeze. Says Jesus, the water that I give you will become a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. Next Sunday, refresh your relationships. I invite you to pray with me. Loving God, help us to drink often from the life-giving waters Jesus offers to care for ourselves so that we might care for one another like an oasis in a dry and barren desert. And in the process, refresh the hearts of many. Amen. Hello again, friends. We come to the time in our service where we prepare our hearts to remember what we in the church call communion. We call it this because it's a time we come together as people who believe in a living God and break bread together. In our scripture library, breaking bread was a sign of hospitality, of welcome and of blessing. This bread, this food was a necessity of life in the biblical world. Bread was used as a symbol for all food, along with water and clothing. These things were considered to be the basic human needs to sustain life. It's meant to be shared and to break bread together describes the way of hospitality to the stranger and friend alike. Bread is life. You know, we still have these basic human needs that we need to nourish us physically. But for God, we also have spiritual needs to attend to. Bravery to speak out and stand up for what we believe. Love for others around us, faith and hope that we will endure even now. This is life in the spirit. And so as we prepare to remember what Jesus called his disciples to, let it remind us our purpose as people of God now. Growth, wholeness, a quiet mind and a spacious heart, living a life of deep purpose. This is our daily bread. Will you gather around the table? On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took the bread, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples saying, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray. God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. 
by your spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in his final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. And so we pray as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may now partake in the elements of bread and juice, the body and blood of Christ. Traveling these wide roads for so long, my heart's been gone from you. Ten thousand miles gone. Oh, I want to come near and give you every part of me, but there's blood on my hands and my lips are words they recur to me surrender to the good lord and he'll wipe your sake clean take me to your river Hey church family, my name is Crystal and I'd like to share an upcoming opportunity to connect here at the church. 
we're continuing to offer our weekly community Bible study online on Wednesdays at noon. Join Pastor Jonathan this Wednesday, January 6th, for a continued conversation on Revelations. All are welcome. We also want to say thank you for the ways that you stayed connected during this last year, and we are so looking forward to a new year and a fresh start with our church family. If you'd like to learn more about who we are, please visit us online at funcdenton.com beliefs. If you're interested in becoming a member, we invite you to visit funcdenton.com membership. Now I invite you to receive this benediction. We have been given a ministry of refreshment. Now having drunk deeply of God's living water, go and be an oasis of God's grace in a dry and barren land. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen. The stars are brightly shining, it is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and never pining, till he The soul felt its worth, a thrill of hope. The weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new.